Hey, it's a new video! And it has commentary! But wait a second, this is not Stardate. No, this is another place entirely. Welcome to Magnolia, a 2018 map set made by Rubix. And I know, I know what you're thinking, but this really isn't a Rubix simp channel. This is a, a bit of an unscheduled video that I decided to do literally last minute. Also, this most likely won't be a full map set playthrough, and uh, we'll only take a look at the first level because I really wanted to showcase it. In fact, I had this map on my to-do list for about two years now, so it feels good to finally get it over with. Alright, so we can already see that this looks kind of like Stardate or Swim in the Whales, except with a different color. Is that the only difference? No, sir, it absolutely isn't. Magnolia is significantly different, as it focuses more on confusing map layouts and gimmicky encounters rather than intense combat. Another Place Entirely is a perfect example of that, and it's uh, one of my favorite maps made by Rivix. I had a lot of fun breaking down the esoteric nature of Sun Moon Stars and Eastern Sun, so you can consider this map a continuation of that. What is so special about it? Let me explain. Out of all things that people complain about in Doom levels, the puzzly and confusing progression has got to be on the top of the list. I think majority of players hate it when they can't find their way or scratch their head wondering about the purpose of a seemingly random switch. Well, this level is the embodiment of that. Try it on your own if you don't believe me. In fact, I highly encourage you to do so. I'm serious, stop watching this video right now, download Magnolia and play through this level yourself before continuing with this commentary. At the very least, try to play it. I'm going to break down all of its secrets and rub it out of its mystique, and I honestly think that to fully appreciate it, you have to have your own unspoiled experience first. So go ahead and play it, then you can come back and we'll continue. Still here? Okay, I'm assuming you've played it already or that you don't care about ruining your first impression. Let's go then. Another place entirely is not a regular Doom level. It's not going to gently guide you through an exciting string of set pieces. Playing it for the first time it feels like finding yourself in an alien place that is not constructed specifically for your enjoyment. You're just a visitor, a stranger. You get lost, you get frustrated, you get confused. But if you persevere, you'll find that there's method to the madness. It might take you some time to uncover the secrets of this place, though. One of the first things we notice right after studying the map is the staircase blocked by a blue pillar. There's a switch nearby with the same blue pattern, so evidently we need a blue keycard. It looks like the moment we press it, we'll be ambushed by a swarm of pain elementals. Behind the central building, there's a switch that requires a yellow keycard and evidently gives us a BFG and releases four archvals. But does it really? Well, no. The yellow keycard is secret and it lowers those ledges with supplies behind. And those vials? Actually, to my knowledge, they can't be killed at all. So it's impossible to get 100% kills in this map. This is just a mess with you. Oh, and a blue switch won't release those pain elementals either. Confused yet? We also find this lift that has blue marks around it. It's safe to assume that we need a blue key to raise the lift. But where is the switch that does that? Did you guess it was the switch that we've seen earlier near the pain elementals? Because that's wrong. The switch we need is on a ledge over here. I bet you didn't even notice it. We can also take the lift on the other side of the tower which brings us to... a switch with the number 4. We press it and the bar's lower. Why does it have a number, though? There are two red switches near the circular structure and they lower bars blocking the way leading towards some kind of a canal. We can jump down there, get the plasma rifle and grab the blue keycard at the end of the road. The switch on the platform lowers the teleporter that takes us out of this place, but there's another switch blocked by bars with strange symbols and something that looks like a lift but we can't bring it down. Hmm. So, we return to the blue switch and enter the staircase. After pressing some switches inside, we find ourselves on a crossroad. Going straight ahead brings us to another tower with bars and a switch with the number 2. We press it and... Oh, now I see what's going on. The purple pattern on the floor raises the bars back up. That's also true for teal bars. Anyway, we find the switch with the number 1 which lowers the teal bars, but we can't go towards the big building because the purple bars are back up. And if we circle around, we'll cross the teal floor trigger and raise the bars again. But wait, there's a switch with strange symbols. Have we seen them before? Ah, yes, the switch in the canal. It lowers the lift and takes us where we need to be. Time to enter the building. We get inside and see an unpleasant sight. How can we possibly get through this? Well, I'll tell you during the demo. Anyway, we kill everything, find the red keycard on the pillar, and when we get close to it, it teleports away? What? So what was the point of that? 
Okay, it's fine. There's another path. We get ambushed on the platform and press the switch which lowers the wall. Wait, what now? Ah, there's a ledge surrounding the main building. We follow it and eventually find the blue switch which raises the lift we've seen before. We go up the tower and find one switch with the number 3 and another that requires a yellow keycard. Um, okay. But where do we go? Oh, there's another ledge that we can jump onto. We follow it, find the lift and go to the main building. Hey, another fun looking situation, I can't wait to deal with that. Anyway, we kill everything and... Uh, wait, what now? We can't get out. There are red bars, but they require a red keycard. There are cavities in the walls, but we can't do anything with them. What's going on? Ah, we have to press the flame wall to reveal four switches because that makes sense. They open a way out with... Uh, something? We step on it and hey, it launches us forward into the damaging floor. What? What are we supposed to do here? Oh, we, we land on those squares and they go out. Let's blacken them all. Oh, and now there's a marine. Hmm. We shoot him and... Aha, it's a retextured Romero's head. We kill it and the level ends. Wait a second, what just happened? What about the other keys? What's, what's up with those numbered switches? Confusion. That's probably the feeling you have when playing this map. If you're adventurous, you might discover that it's possible to jump out into another dark canal that has a whole bunch of pillars with numbers on them. And a health potion on a pillar? Also, there's a barrel on a pedestal. When we go the other way, we can pick up a health potion which triggers an ambush with a whole lot of barons. Oh, and there's a yellow skull key on a pillar that we cannot get. You might even discover that you can get to the secret yellow keycard by jumping onto the ledge surrounding the platform that we've seen before. Now we can press the switch on the tower and it opens two shootable switches on the other side. One of them unlocks a teleport that takes us to this ledge and there's, um... Nothing there? The other one doesn't seem to do anything. Huh. If you are really observant, you might find those yellow bars in that window. If we shoot it while holding the yellow keycard, it opens a way to the balcony with some supplies and... There's another switch that requires a yellow skull key that we cannot get. Okay. And that's probably as far as most people will get on their own. But don't worry, because I'm here to reveal all of the secrets that this map has to hide. Getting the yellow skull key is designed in such a way that you'll probably never guess what you have to do without looking it up in the editor. There are three triggers we have to get to in order to lower the pillar. We need to step into that little square which lowers it by 50%. But that trigger won't work unless we pick up this health potion first and unleash a horde of barons. The other trigger which lowers the pillar for the second time is on this little pedestal that can only be accessed from the other side. However, it won't work unless we get to the other two triggers first. Now, uh, how can you figure out that this is what you have to do? Simple. You can't. Chances are you cross the last trigger first, then do the other two which will only lower the key once. Eventually, as you keep wandering around this level blindly, you'll probably run over the pedestal again and most likely you won't even realize that it's actually one of the triggers. Now, with both the yellow key and the yellow skull key, we can finally press this mysterious switch on the balcony which leads us to, um... Um... Nope. The two potions in the corridor of this side building give us a clue that we have to find two health potions to open something. The first potion is in a dark canal and requires two switches to be pressed, but uh, they're blocked by bars with numbers. You've probably figured out by now that these numbers correspond to the switches on towers. The first one is blocked by numbers 1 and 3, the other by 2 and 4. This suggests that we can't unlock them both at the same time, but that's just a red herring, because if we venture further, we find a switch that requires all bars to be lowered. The second potion is pretty well hidden. On the crossroads section, we have to get to this ledge, which opens a secret switch that in turn unlocks the potion on the other side. So, we got them both now, and what is our reward? Uh, a path that is... Uh, blocked. Seriously? Are you having fun over there, Ribix? The red skull key can be acquired in the first canal with a blue keycard, but in order to make it appear, we have to do something that will most likely be a deal breaker for anyone aspiring to do a 100% playthrough of this map. We need to jump onto that black ledge and follow it to the very end. There we find a switch that gives us the skull key. So, are you looking forward to demo recording this yet? Now, the red skull key opens a secret door in the... Um... Oh, uh, what's that, mom? Oh, you need help with the... Uh, okay, I'll be there in a minute.
Uh, sorry, folks. I gotta go. I, I have to be somewhere else anyway, and I got some chores to take care of, and uh, a pie in an oven, and um, s stuff. Oh, let's talk about the barrels. There are three barrels on pedestals that we can find in this level. One is in a dark canal. The other near the crossroad. The third one is hidden away in this tunnel. Wait a second. How do we even get there? Is there a switch that raises the stairs? A secret wall? Maybe we have to... Oh, oh, oh. There was an arch vial. We killed them already. And I guess we needed to... Damn it. Now, you might be wondering what's up with those barrels. What happens when we find all of them? Well, to my knowledge, uh, nothing. I'm serious, those barrels do nothing. Uh, the pedestals are all marked as secrets, but that's about it. There are no triggers or tags on them, so unless there's some mysterious super secret behind them, I'm assuming they're basically just uh, old school arcade collectibles that are needed for nothing other than 100% in the map. Honestly, I think that's pretty cool. Next, we have uh, OK, OK. I know what you're thinking, and no, I will not say anything about this place. Not until you see it for yourself, because that needs to be seen to be believed. <sighs> Let's continue. You might recall that we've seen the red keycard, but it teleported away. Once that happens, it appears on a red pillar in a dark canal, but it's too high to reach. In order to bring it down, we have to get to the switch locked behind numerical pillars on the other end of the canal. Dealing with pillars on the second tower is simple enough. We get there from the crossroad and lower number 2, which leads us to number 1 but also raises number 2 again. We use the newly unlocked lift in the canal to get to the big building and when we leave we get teleported right next to number 2, however right now number 1 is already lowered so all we have to do is jump back into the canal and make our way out. The first tower requires us to activate a blue key lift which we've already discussed. We also need a secret yellow keycard. We take the lift, cross the trigger that raises number 4, lower number 3 and press the yellow key switch which opens those two skulls on the other side. Shooting the rightmost switch lowers the teal bars. We need to lower the purple ones and shoot the skull to lower the teal ones and then take the teleporter to the ledge. Now all the bars are lowered. All we have to do now is go back to the dark canal, press the switch and get the red key. The red key lowers the bars in the main building and gives us access to the teleporter. If we have already opened the passage in a room with two potions, we'll be able to proceed now. We still need a yellow key to open the final set of bars though. This takes us to a neat little BFG island. After some platforming we get the big gun and some cells. Leaving this place takes us to the main area where we have to deal with all those pain elementals that we've seen before. In one of their rooms there's a teleporter that takes us back to the main building, but beware. Once you use that teleporter, it will become inaccessible, effectively blocking you from leaving. You can still try to gimmick the conveyor belt propeller and drop down, but it's kinda tricky. In short, do not go to the main building without the red keycard, and don't take the pain elemental teleporter unless you're ready to leave the map. One more note about the BFG island. Apparently the propeller is supposed to take us to a different place which also has some platforming and eventually leads us to the BFG island. But as it turns out, the mechanism is broken and you can never legitimately get there, which means you can't trigger the last secret. So not only we have to leave 4 Archvals alive, but also leave with 15 out of 16 secrets. Nice. To be quite honest, I'm not really sure why that thing doesn't work. It, it seems like everything is stacked properly. In fact, I tested it in GZ Doom where line dev skips should not happen and it still doesn't work. Ah, uh, whatever. As far as I know, you can't get to the last secret, so we have to take what we can get. Okay, so we're almost ready to jump into the down, but hold up. There's an elephant in the room. Doesn't the video title say HMP Max? What? Why isn't it UV Max? Is this level so insanely hard that I had to turn down the difficulty? Well, not exactly. You see, Magnolia doesn't have an ultraviolence setting at all. You can select it, but it's exactly the same as Hurt Me Plenty. Why? Well, probably because none of you ever back down from UV, so the only way to prevent you from automatically selecting it is taking it away completely. Haha. <laughs> at least that's what I think. Now, legends say that if you prove to Ribix that you have played it on Hermie Plenty, he will actually send you a UV compatible version of the WAD. I'm pretty sure I've heard that somewhere, but I can't find the source anymore, so who knows? Who knows what's real anymore? I don't. So let's not think about it. Alright, one last thing I want to rant about. Feel free to skip ahead, but I need to get this off my chest. So, on the first day of recording, I got a successful exit after about two and a half hours. It wasn't pretty, but it was acceptable. 
I was really happy and re recorded the demo replay the next day, but when I checked the video file, something was off. The demo was approximately 36 minutes long, but the video was 40 minutes. A closer investigation made my heart sink. I had the game speed decreased all this time and I didn't even notice. Now, don't worry, that didn't affect my other demos because I have uh, every map set in its own folder with a separate executable. Magnolia was the first one I made a few years ago and it wasn't up to speed with all of my recent PR Boom settings. Anyway, you can probably imagine I wasn't very happy about this whole situation and don't even ask how I didn't notice that the speed was decreased. Actually, you know what? For all I know, I might have decreased the speed after recording the demo, but at that point there was no way to be sure. Of course, I could have replayed the demo at a normal speed and mentioned that it was not recorded at full speed in the description, but it just didn't feel honest. I, I knew I had to re-record it. Now let me ask you this. Why the hell does PR Boom not reset the game speed when you restart the application? Why? It's so unbelievably stupid. I mean, I didn't even know it was a thing until I tested it. Am I crazy for thinking that something that completely changes the game like a different game speed should reset after you restart the game? I'm absolutely stunned that it works like that, it's ridiculous. I never actually decreased the game speed, so I have no idea how and more importantly when it happened. I do increase the speed sometimes when I replay demos, but that's it. Well, I have learned my lesson. I have removed the decreased game speed from my key bindings completely, so this kind of thing never happens again. But let's be honest, it should not have happened in the first place. Anyway, here's another story. I lost one of the runs in the red keycard building when finding a cyberdemon because I accidentally touched caps lock. What does caps lock do? Well, it shouldn't do anything actually because I moved the auto run function to a different key so that I don't accidentally press it. But I did and uh, my view shifted by 180 degrees. That's right, somehow I had the 180 degree turn set to caps lock. I swear I have never done that, I don't even use that binding. so. I brushed caps lock, I turned around and died instantly. PR Boom decided to bind the one option that completely screwed me over to that one button that I accidentally pressed in that one critical moment when I needed it the least. Thanks universe, screw you too. But wait, that's not all. I finally got a demo at a proper speed, but this time it took me three and a half hours. Also that demo was trash, it was an, it was an exit but it was an embarrassment, probably the worst demo I've ever recorded. It was terrible. So I thought to myself, okay, I've got the demo, I'll casually try to get a better one, but if I can't, I'll just use that for the video and ruin my reputation. So the next day I started recording again and it quickly turned from casual to something much worse. Hours have passed and I couldn't even get close. Everything was going wrong, so it became personal. At this point I had to get a better demo no matter what. But you can probably guess what happened next. I've spent more hours on this map than I'm willing to admit and still, no luck. At that moment I was like, okay, it's over, screw it, I'm not making this video, this is ridiculous. So later that day, while I was trying to relax while watching Zemov's Let's Play of This World of Mine, I decided to try again while listening to the video. After about an hour and a half I finally got it. The demo you're about to see took way more of my time than it should have. And this level isn't even that difficult. Um, I'm, I'm so done, I, I need a long break from demo recording anything harder than the original Doom levels. Anyway, this demo is very good. I mean it, it's really smooth, I don't get lost, I, I get to showcase everything properly and uh, there are only some embarrassing mistakes at the very end. But let me make this clear, I am not proud of this playthrough. This is a broken clock victory. You know how even a broken clock shows the correct time twice a day? Well, that's exactly what this playthrough is in my eyes. Okay, rent over, let's check out the demo. Man, that was a long intro, even for my standards. I like to get the Revenant angry with the Baron. It's not extremely impactful, but the very last fight will be with a swarm of pain elementals nearby and it's always more convenient to not have anyone else sniping you here. Surprisingly, the odds are pretty good that the Revenant will kill the Baron, so it's worth giving it a shot. Oh, I should probably mention that Barons in Magnolia actually do not count towards the total kill count, so we don't really have to worry about them. They're there just to pester you, and we don't even have enough ammunition to deal with them anyway, so... You can use them for infighting if you really want to, but in most cases it's not worth it. So, before we do anything, we have to clear out this entire outside area. The main thing we'll be dealing with monsters in the water pit. 
I'm always taking my time here because it's not a good idea to rush this section. There are just too many hit scanners. And also I don't want anyone distracting me while I'm going for the red skull key. We've got a few chain gunners supported by the pain elemental on this side and a few revenants with cacodemons on the other. I want to clear out the zombies one by one and then get the infighting going between the revs and cackles. Once that's in motion we can take care of the pain elemental. This map is not extremely tight on resources, but it's actually not giving you a whole lot of ammo, so it's better to rely on infighting whenever possible. You don't need to be too paranoid about it, but uh, it's better safe than sorry. I mean, you'll see for yourself that I don't end this map with a whole lot of ammo. Right, so now it's time to take control of the first tower. This encounter is simple but nasty. We've got a revenant with a mancubus and another revenant instantly teleporting behind us. Usually I try to kill the skeleton behind first and then get the other two guys angry with each other. By the way, that's very very strange. That revenant started spamming missiles at the imp on the pillar but didn't manage to kill him. I checked it in the camera mode and yeah, that imp took like 3 or 4 hits and survived. I, I have no idea how did that happen. Must have been multiple low damage rolls in a row. That was the luckiest imp ever. So right now I want to secure the yellow skull key. You have to drop down into this area twice to get it. I think overall my route is pretty good here. I, I try to make sure that I don't have to backtrack a million times and I admit that I actually had to write down the order of things on a piece of paper because otherwise I'd forget what to do. I'm also prioritizing getting to that part of the level as quickly as possible because it's pretty much a roll of a dice. You know what always happens in those levels, there's always this one section that you're always dreading. And here's the Skalky, time to move on. Hey look, I told you the Revenant would win the duel. Okay, next stop is the canal with the blue keycard, but we won't enter it through the front because I want to get the red Skalky right off the bat as well. So this is probably something that a lot of people would hate, but uh, Actually, I like this bit on the ledge quite a lot. Surprisingly, I have an almost 100% success rate of getting through this. The worst thing that can happen is getting trolled by the Doom physics and bouncing off of the wall, which can happen very easily here. Oh yeah, and this is also pretty dangerous. If the RNG hates you, then you might get knocked off by the Barons. You might have to suck it up and tank some damage as a trade-off. Also, it's super easy to bounce off of the wall when going for the switch. Do not try to get close to it. So right now we need to get some infighting going between the green cyber and the horde over there. For the longest time I thought you can't really run past those monsters, but it's possible because the gap is big enough to squeeze through. When you go for the ledge first, you do this fight backwards. Normally you grab the plasma rifle and deal with those enemies without the help of a cyber. And in case you're wondering, the switch from which we took the red skull removed invisible walls around those enemies. And yeah, I haven't mentioned this in the intro, but this armor bonus lets us activate a little supply cache with rockets in the main area. But uh, I'm actually gonna do this much much later. It's just not extremely important to us right now, because none of the main encounters are really dependent on your rocket supplies. Yep, it's a teal map set, so obviously we get a teal cyber demon. These guys are exactly the same as normal cybers, except that they only have a quarter of the health. So basically they have as much health as a Baron of Hell. Also, and this is a good part, they can actually infight with the red cyber demons. Hmm, I wonder if that's gonna be significant at some point. <laughs> that's pretty unusual, blocking the teleporter pad with the pain elemental. <laughs> Not sure what's the point of that. I mean, if you really want to escape from this place as quickly as possible, then this pain elemental is not gonna stop you. Now we have three keys already, but we need one more to get to the Cyber Demon Pit. The Red Skull ensures that we'll be able to get an early BFG. 
here we have the magical potions that open a locked path. This is an alternative way of getting the BFG, but it requires a red keycard, which is ridiculously hard to get without having the BFG already. The BFG has no utility in the Cyber Demon Pit at all, but it helps a great deal in the big building near the second tower, so doing those things in reverse order makes little sense. Unless, of course, for some reason you're able to do the red building <laughs> without the BFG. Since we're gonna have to do an Archvile jump here, I want to get the Kakademon out of the way. So I want him to die somewhere where he cannot be revived. The Chain Gunners might also get resurrected by the Archvile, but um, we cannot do anything about their positioning. This armor bonus is a trigger that opens a switch in the previous area. Here's another nice opportunity for infighting. There's another Revenant around the corner and we'll try to get him to join the party as well. This used to be one of my most hated parts of this level because of the damn Archval jump. It doesn't even give you anything, but it's required for triggering the secret, so we have to do it. Thankfully I found out a fairly reliable way of doing it, so I'm not as upset about it as before. But still, I I'm just opposed to the idea of requiring Archval jumps at any point and for any reason. I need to prepare for the jump. We have to heal up, uh, get the security armor and the soul sphere that I left behind specifically for that moment. By the way, I, I like how the supplies are placed in this level. There are those caches of items in various areas, like this pile of medikits. Weapons are also always next to corpses, which is really neat and makes the item placement feel more natural. This level very much reminds me of Eastern Sun in the sense that uh, it looks like there's some untold story behind this place. I always wonder if mappers actually think about stuff like that. So this can take a while. I need the Archvale in the right position, otherwise I'm risking getting blasted in the wrong direction, which is not the end of the world, but it's just more health and armor wasted. Unfortunately, we can't just stand next to the tunnel. We need to have a running start. I used to think that strafe running is better, but actually all we need is a bit of momentum in the right direction, and that's pretty much it. There we go, so almost 60 health gone for a secret that doesn't give us anything. Amazing. But informative. It shows that people who record demos will do anything just to get that sweet 100% completion. By the way, that switch releases two revenants and does nothing else. It's just a trap for the first time players because the other switch lowers the lift. I actually really like that, it's a nasty little trick. Oh, and here's the second barrel, time to go upstairs. Behold, the toughest ambush in the level, Zombie Man. It's funny because you expect something more dangerous in this area. This is the lift that leads us towards the second tower. We can go there right away, but like I said, there's no point going there without the BFG. It's possible to survive without the BFG, but uh, it's incredibly dicey. I actually don't know how to do it properly. Well, I, I kind of do, but that method just seems kind of stupid to me. Right, so here's the secret to the first health potion. I think this kind of stuff is the reason why not many people talk about this map set. It's too niche and too gimmicky for most players. This fight looks really intimidating at first, but it's actually really easy. The pain elemental sections are completely shielded from other enemies, so all you really need to do is to rush there and kill everything from a safe position. That's the green cyber in case you cannot tell, so it, it goes down almost instantly. These cyberdemons are an interesting addition. They're just as lethal as the normal ones, but because they're so fragile in comparison, they can be used in a larger variety of situations. And truth be told, every major encounter in this map has at least one cyberdemon, which is the reason why it's a relatively high risk run. So it's deceptive, it doesn't seem like a very hostile level, it doesn't have extremely precise combat encounters, but the threat level is still surprisingly high and it's very easy to go from thinking, oh it's not too bad, to just dying instantly to a stray rocket. 
By the way, I have just pressed the switch that's on the ledge above. It doesn't really change anything, we can press it later as well. There's a switch which raises the blue lift and we can also take the supplies from the ledges. This yellow switch can be activated with either a keycard or a skull. Just an interesting fact. But uh, we need both of those to access the upcoming section. I'm uh, a bit worried that I might have hyped up that part a bit too much, but uh, I think you'll still like it. For what it's worth, it's definitely one of the centerpieces of this level. Something that uh, nobody will ever forget, <laughs> no matter how much they want to. Over here we can get the yellow keycard. You have to be very careful because it's surprisingly easy to bounce off of this ledge. I think it's because of those torches above, uh, there's some issues with collision I think. Alright, we're all set. Time to go to the best and the worst part of this level. Are you ready? Okay, so this is phase one. Three green cyber demons and one red cyber demon behind us and facing away from us. Since those two kinds of cybers can infight, the solution is obvious. However, this situation is more tricky than it looks. Cyber demons do not take splash damage, which means that the red one has to hit each of the three green cybers directly. My tactic is to always take out the one cyber that usually isn't infighting to make things easier. Switching sides here is very risky. So this might not look too bad in a demo, but trust me, you can, you can just die here instantly if you get too many rockets flying everywhere. It's easy to get distracted and you always have to remember that when the red cyber demon is done with one of the green ones, he'll most likely shoot you immediately and if you're not in the corner then you might get blown to bits. It's very hard to dodge multiple cyber demon rockets and you might get a situation that's pretty much impossible unless you can see the world in slow motion. Also, do not get too comfortable in that safe corner because the, the green cybers sometimes manage to kill the red one and then you have to act fast. Once we press the switch on the other side, two Archvars will appear. You have to pace yourself with rockets though, because if you're too quick you might push one of them into the pit and if that happens you're dead. And you'll see why when we drop down there ourselves. Okay, the main event is coming up. Buckle up. And here we go! Party, 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 yeah! How do you like that encounter? So, yeah, this is just as fun to play as you might expect. It's not. It's horrible. It's a misery. It's 30 minutes of playtime to get here and you can get completely destroyed in the blink of an eye. It's a miracle every time you survive this nonsense. By the way, that is what I meant when I said that the BFG would be worthless here. If you fire your gun here, you'll go up in flames immediately because of those arch vials. So all you can really do here is try to stay alive long enough to have a bit more room to dodge. You really have to pay attention where you're going and if it's maybe worth changing the direction. If nothing's behind you, then it might be a good idea to go the other way. Also be super careful when you see one of the green cyber demons die. It's impossible to see if whichever red cyber killed them is still firing the volley of three rockets or not, so you might walk straight into an explosive surprise. Man, I'm so glad I don't have to play this anymore. It's just a complete mess. Thankfully you don't have to come here to complete the level, so you can just skip it if you want. So, uh, these three switches trigger crushers that kill the Archvals and make the red cyber demons teleport away. You do not want to press them too early though, because uh, if, if there are green cyber demons still alive, then you have to deal with them yourself. So you should definitely wait until everything is dead. Uh, once there are just a few green cyber demons left, the risk drops significantly because you have a lot more room and uh, fewer opportunities to run into a rocket. So yeah, this is funny when you see it for the first time, but it's a complete torment if you try to record the demo. Basically, if you get past this, you should be able to beat the rest of the level. But as you can see, there's no shortage of things that can go wrong here. 
Actually, if you are super unlucky, then the cyber demons might actually alert one of the arch vials on the ledges. And uh, if that happens, it's pretty much the end of the run. Thankfully, that doesn't happen very often. You wanna hide in this corner once the cyber demons are gone, because those damn vials can still sometimes target you even when they're being crushed. That's why you don't want any green cyber demons wandering around anymore. Finally, the nightmare is over. This red wall requires a red skull key. I got it early to avoid backtracking there after surviving this hellhole. But if you think we'll get a moment to breathe, then you're wrong, because uh, now it's time for the second major ordeal of this map. The red keycard building. Thankfully, this encounter does not require godlike reflexes, so it's much easier. Still, it does have a cyber demon thrown into a mix, obviously, so we're not out of the woods yet. Well, we're not out of the woods until this level is complete, so we gotta stay sharp. So this is another situation where it's obvious that we can't fire our gun until we absolutely have to. You gotta wait until the cyber starts shooting, then alert one of the imps and enjoy the carnage. As you remember, there are four archvals and four revenants in the alcoves. The revenants are close enough so that we can get the cyber demon to hit them through splash damage. However, it's the archvals that are the real problem. I honestly don't know what's the intended strategy here. I mean, you can try to lure the mouse towards the cyber, but trying to watch the, the, the vial and the cyber demon at the same time in a room like that, where you have pretty much no cover at all, is just a recipe for a disaster. That was really lucky. A single volley of rockets alerted both sides. Nice. So yeah, I'm being cheap here and just blasting the vials at the BFG, but remember that this fight is supposed to be doable without it. I've seen a demo of that strategy, but it looks incredibly luck based. Uh, this is much safer. From the progression standpoint, we have to get into those alcoves which open switches next to the cyber demon. There's really no reason to leave the cyber alive, so we just have to slowly kill him with a double barrel shotgun. The last phase of this encounter begins after we hit both switches. Pillars slower in the middle of a room while two Hell Knights and two Archvals behind us get activated. Once they move out of the way, a green Cyber Demon appears. This is another situation where I think the intention is to get the Cyber to kill the other monsters, but uh, I don't do that. Instead I launch a couple of rockets towards the enemies and then finish off the Cyber Demon with a plasma rifle. You know, when I decided to re-record this demo, I thought that I would take more risks and actually rely entirely on infighting in these encounters, you know, just to show how they're intended to be played. But at this point I was so tired of this that I decided that I didn't want to push my luck even further down the drain. It's just way faster and safer to do it this way. Okay, we're finally on the right track. The next couple of minutes will involve essentially wrapping things up before we go towards the final major encounter in the main building. Right now we're gonna lower the final bars in the first tower. As you have probably noticed, we already got all the bars in the second tower, so that's all that's left to do. Once this tower is done, we will drop down to the dark canal and get all the remaining stuff there that we've skipped before. The second health potion, the last barrel and the red keycard. As I mentioned before, the final fight is with the pain elementals at the start of the level, but really the last encounter that matters is in the main building. That battle is the main reason why I wanted to re-record the previous demo. Basically it's another scenario where we have to use infighting to succeed. However, in the last recording I panicked and started blasting everything with the BFG. Now, first of all, it's not how you're supposed to do it, and so it would have been a terrible showcase. Second, I ended up running out of ammunition, I had to kill the Sabbath demon with a chain gun. And finally, because I had no resources left, the last encounter with the pain elementals was really awkward. 
Like I said before, it was probably the worst demo I've ever recorded. So, while a part of me has died while trying to get a better recording, well, at least you have a more enjoyable playthrough to watch. Boy, am I glad it's over. I don't know why I had so many problems with this map. But you know what? The same thing happened with God Machine, and interestingly, both successful runs were achieved near the end of the day. Well, I guess this experience taught me a valuable lesson. The next time I want to record something, I should do this late into the evening when I'm already tired. Because evidently, I play a lot better when I'm falling asleep. Alright, we don't have ammo to kill those barons, so I'm gonna try to get them closer to the wall and then run past them. There is a berserk on this level, so you can try to punch them if you're really bored. Okay, got the final key, it's time to go back up. So, right now we'll open that cache with rockets that I mentioned a long time ago. It's guarded by 10 caca demons. Truth be told, I'm not sure about this whole setup. I mean, extra rockets are nice, but we have to spend a lot of them on the caca demons themselves. I mean, we could try to get the cacos to fight with the barons, but uh, I tried that once and it didn't work out too well. It was slow and uh, relatively unsuccessful. So yeah, I'm trying to get uh, as much out of splash damage as possible. There's also a big stack of stim packs in the pit, so it might be worth opening it up uh, if you're really low on health. Anyway, this is the time when the demo gets a bit less optimized. I do some extra steps that in retrospect are not really necessary, but it doesn't really matter, I'm not going after record time anyway. And we're done with this. Time to unlock the passage which required finding both health potions. This is something that I could have done later actually. I should have lowered the red bars in the main building first, uh, which would have opened up this pillar and I wouldn't have to go here now. Actually, the reason I came here was because I wanted to grab the big cell pack that I have left near the crossroad, but uh, I completely forgot about it and I will have to come back for it in a minute. Stupid, I even had it written down. And here's our final secret. You might want to stay inside for a moment because there's a very good chance that some of the barons below already threw the projectiles your way. Yeah, so I switched to the BFG and realized, oh, I, I haven't picked up the cell pack, damn it. I gotta go back and get it, because we might need more ammo for the final fight. I mean, technically we don't need that much ammo because we're supposed to get the monsters to kill each other, but if things go badly we might have to resort to spamming the BFG. I don't really want to use too many cells unless I have to, because killing those 18 pain elementals later on without the BFG is just a complete misery. Trust me, I've been there. So we're almost to the main building, and we'll have to deal with 8 Hell Knights, 2 Pain Elementals and 4 Ardras with the help of a Cyber Demon. This fight is really cool and pretty fun, but after 24 minutes of playing it's also incredibly stressful. But thankfully the game was merciful for once, and I can tell you that the whole thing will go flawlessly. I hate these jumps, like, they, they are not as easy as they seem. In the previous demo I failed like three times when trying to get through this gap. I gotta say, I never really know how to begin this whole thing. I want to get the Arjvals first because if things go south I'd be able to clean the place out with the BFG. Starting with Hell Knights is not that great because once the vials get alerted they might start resurrecting them and resurrected knights will go after you and not the Cyber Demon. I'm also scared of Pain Elementals because their lost souls are always very unpredictable. They can flood the area and block you as you're trying to dodge the rockets. In general though, you should not be afraid of taking damage in a situation like this. Evading the cyber is your top priority. Okay, so now stars have aligned. We've got the vials angry with the cyber and no hell knights wandering around. And look at that, both pain elementals got damaged as well. This is just mwah. It could not have gone better. And I take no credit for this, it was a complete accident. Mm. 
Man, just look at this. Perfect. This is exactly how it's supposed to go. We want the Cyberdemon to kill as much as possible before we do anything. I need those vials out of the way, but the Lost Souls might become a problem as well. And unfortunately, Arch Vials are reviving the Hell Knights now. Uh, this is getting a bit nasty, so we have to be really careful. Yeah, and unfortunately, you kinda have to let the Lost Souls uh, slowly chip away your health. You have to stay away from the Cyber. Yep, at this point I was mildly panicking, because this kind of situation can go from amazing to instant death in a flash. So I decided to not take any more risks and kill the last Arjva myself. By the way, a green cyber demon will teleport in once we press the flame wall, so we could technically try to get the red one to fight with him, but there's no way I'm pushing my luck this much. This is already going too well and I don't want to mess it up. Alrighty, let's take care of the Cyber. If I was playing with saves, I probably would have tried to shun him at this point, but in a demo like this, uh, this is just not worth it. I mean, it's already over, we've won, so why risk this nearly perfect run by trying to be fancy? Good, let's unleash the last Cyber and then go to the BFG island. I hope you like watching people fail easy platforming sections in Doom, because you're in for a real treat. But that's fine, you get to see all the important parts done properly, and I mean, you can't blame me for being a bit shaken after getting this far. So, now the pillar in this passage is opened and we can proceed. It's such a pretty place too, I mean, this entire map is really pretty. I haven't mentioned this before, but the music, which you probably can't hear very well, was all composed by Rubix himself. It's really nice and you should definitely check it out while playing the map yourself. So, like I said, I'll most likely not make videos about the other two levels of Magnolia. Maybe I, if I end up recording demos for them, I'll just upload raw playthroughs with no commentary, I don't know. But that will probably not happen anytime soon, because I really need to take a break from this. From demo recording in general, because that was not a pleasant experience. Don't get me wrong, this level is fantastic and I love it when playing casually with saves, but demo recording is a whole different story. So give Magnolia a try if you haven't, though I guess maybe I'm only one of the very few people who enjoy strange maps like this. The next level is really cool as well, I haven't played the third one yet. So it's, it's time to wrap this up, uh, let's go. So right here I make sure to not fire more than 3 shots at the group, because uh, then I wouldn't have enough ammo for the other one. Still gonna have to finish off the few remaining pain elementals with other weapons. I decided to not waste time on lost souls, uh, they don't count towards the total kills anyway. Just a reminder in case you forgot, we can't kill the last 4 enemies and we can't get the last secret, so this is effectively a 100% playthrough. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief showcase of Magnolia. It's a very interesting map set and I'm glad I got to make this video, because I think that this project deserves more attention. Okay, I gotta go now. Take care everyone, and see you later!